Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today I'm just going to do a quick, easy video showing off what I'm running in my server rack. I, I, I was neglecting to make this video sooner because everything is kind of a mess, but I decided to just, whatever. It's fun to make videos like this that are just easy. Um, and we're also going to do a couple upgrades, or just, just one upgrade. And so, yeah, I'm going to start from top to bottom here. Up here on the top of the rack, I have this. Let's zoom in a little bit. I have an HP DL360 G7 running PF Sense. Um, I'm not gonna be able to tell you much about this because I'm absolutely terrible with networking, but it is my internet router. Um, it's way overkill. It's got a. It's got 12 gigabytes of memory, I think, 12 or 8, and it's uh, got a. L5630, 50 something 30. It's a quad core 8 thread low power 40 watt TDP processor in there. So it's really low spec, but it's still overkill for just an internet router. So now I've got cable management shroud. And I have my Dell Power Connect 5548 switch. It's kind of underutilized right now, but. It's probably one of the best switches you can get for home lab use right now. Come on, camera. Focus. That is not focused. Can we focus on anything here? Come on. It's pretty good, I guess. Alright. Yeah, so there's the 5548. It's a 48-port switch. No PoE or anything. Nothing fancy. It's got two 10 gig ports, which is which are connected up to my storage server. No, no PoE or anything, but it is fully managed, so I can do VLANs and stuff, which I do have a couple set up. Although, again, can't say much about that because I am terrible with networking. <clears throat> so then we can get back into the stuff that I'm more comfortable with, which is just compute and storage. So down here we have a. DL385 G7. The 5 makes it an AMD server. It is running Windows Server 2019 Essentials. And it is my storage server. It's also a Hyper-V host. It's also a Windows deployment server. And the reason that I'm running this as my storage server and not using something like FreeNAS, which is extremely popular, or TrueNAS now, is that um, I just wanted to consolidate some of my servers. I didn't want to run FreeNAS, or TrueNAS now again, <laughs> virtualized just because of stability issues with that. And um, I also needed a Windows server for stuff like Windows deployment services. So I just thought, why not just consolidate everything into one server that's running Windows Server? And I'm actually glad I did that because I like Windows storage spaces. I was actually surprised. I'm liking it a lot more than what TrueNAS had. Might just be because I'm more familiar with Windows, but it has some really nice features, and it seems really polished, and it works really well. Um, and then there's my NetApp DS4243, which I'll get to later. I'm going to skip over that now. Um, and then there's the DL380P that was in my first video. Took a look at that. Um, I've removed a couple hard drives from it that weren't being used, but other than that, it's the same as it was before. It's got two um, E5-26... 43 V2 CPUs, 104 gigabytes of memory, um, a Quadro P1000 graphics card, and I bought a couple Sun Oracle F80 SSDs to put in here too for my Minecraft servers, which you can still join. Um, I've got one running on here that is called Anarchy MC. It's just a Anarchy server, so you can do whatever you want, make a base thousand blocks away from spawn or whatever. It's fun stuff to do. Good adventure server, so feel free to join that. Um, the website, which is also hosted on the server, is um, on my YouTube About page, so go go check that out. It's running on 1.16.5. Um, I'm sorry if the ping is bad. My ISP is throttling Minecraft. It sucks. I need to find a way to work around that. But and then at the very bottom, we have my HP... RT3000 UPS. It's a 3000 watt UPS. Um, a little overkill for what I'm doing right now, but 
it's nice to have that expandability and that runtime since I'm only using about a kilowatt. Which, I mean, it's, it's quite a lot for a home lab, but still. Um, and this isn't even really a home lab anymore. I'd kind of call this a home data center because it's hosting stuff like Minecraft, and I really can't turn that off. I hate having downtime on this, even though like nobody plays on my servers. Still, they find a way to contact me and say, hey, the server's down, when is down? So, yeah. <laughs> the only other thing is, yes, this is a 15U server rack, and I'm definitely gonna upgrade that in the future. I have some pretty big plans, and I want to move the server rack right here. Um, I've been looking at a... Th this is a raising electronics rack, it was the cheapest rack that I could find at the time, although I feel like every single server rack has gone up a lot in price lately. Um, I don't know if that's something to do with Bitcoin mining or... No idea, but I got this for 130 bucks. now they're like 170 but... I'm looking at the 42U variant of this because it's just about tall enough to fit in this room. And I just wanted that, wanted that 42U so I could have the expandability to actually put more servers in. Um... Yeah, I moved the crap out of the way to make it look better. My plan is to get a 42U rack, put it here. Um, it's just about fit. I do actually have, I hate to admit this, but I, ha I bought a 42U fully enclosed rack. I think it's actually 45U. It was the deal of a century. It had some equipment in there. It had a shelf and it had a switch in it. And it was fully enclosed. It's a black box branded rack. And it was 20 bucks. <laughs> and I got so excited by the deal that I didn't realize that there's literally no way that I can fit this into the house. So I'm disappointed about that, but I do plan on getting a bigger rack so I have that expandability. So, um, also I just recently wired up a 30 amp circuit for my 3000 watt UPS. And yes, before the electricians tell me, I know that I used a Romex wire clamp for MC armor clad, metal clad cable and that's because Lowe's was out of stock of um, fittings for metal clad cable. I'm sorry, I know that it's not the right fitting, but it works and I used anti-shorts and all that stuff so it's fine. I'm not going to show you the panel because it's a disaster. It's a it's an old cutler hammer panel from the 70s, and it has seen better days for sure. Though at least it's a nice panel for the time. <laughs> um, so around back here, this is why I didn't want to show you this. I want to get some cable management arms for this stuff, and I want to get it out of this corner. It's just not nice. <laughs> but, and it's too dark back here too for my camera. Here's this Dell PDU, which I've had forever. Don't really even know where it came from. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really- there's not, not, not much inter interesting back here, because it's just a mess, and this is embarrassingly messy. So, yeah, what I said I was gonna do today was a couple upgrades, and that's because w with my NetApp disk shelf, as you see, it's not totally filled up with disks right now. It's only got 12 caddies, and there's 24 slots, but look what came in the mail. NetApp caddies. So what I plan on doing is I have some... Not very large capacity, but very nice Seagate 750 gigabyte SATA hard drives. These are pretty old, but my god, they are the most reliable things I've ever seen. <laughs> they weigh a ton. They work great. They probably got a lot of power on our hours, but they just they just keep trucking along. And I only got four of those. Ignore the fact that one of these is actually a Western Digital Black. Um, I installed two of them in here already. The disk six and seven are two, both Seagate 750 gigabyte drives. I'm gonna put the next four in this row, and then the other caddies I have left over are just gonna go down there to fill up space. I am do have some plans to get some four terabyte hard drives in there. Um, we'll see when that happens. <laughs> and also, I'm gonna get some larger capacity hard drives in this server down here. I plan on running Plex and a couple backup servers too, so I need some larger capacity drives. Let's go and get some hard drives and caddies. I'm pretty disappointed in the packing job of these. I'm gonna have to get a partial refund so I can buy myself some new caddies because 
some of these are pretty broken. It's like the caddies themselves were used on the outside were used as packing material for the ones on the inside. So we'll see how many are broken. And there's a couple of little bends in here, which I don't really care about that much. That'll still work. But yeah, thanks eBay. So I got all the hard drives caddied up. Sorry I couldn't hold the camera and operate a screwdriver. So I'm just gonna go pop these into the disc shelf and I'll put the rest of the caddies in there except for that broken one. And um, then I will go and configure the storage pool. So let's go get these hard drives in place. Alright, well, it's not totally filled up as that stupid broken caddy. I'm gonna try to manhandle that with some pliers and see if I can get it to work fit again. Um, but it, it does look a lot better filled up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna label those hard drives off camera, so I can't really do much. I'm holding a microphone and a phone, and the phone doesn't want to focus. I'm sorry for the kind of low production quality on this video. I, I just didn't want to set up a bunch of stuff, but I'll... We will go configure the array, and that will be a bit nicer production quality. All right. Here I am, I have remoted into the HP DL385 server, and we can see in disk management a whole crap ton of hard drives, all these drives that I added. First, I'm just going to delete, or I'm going to online and delete all of the partitions that are already here, and then we can go create a storage pool, and then we can create a virtual disk. And down here is the disk that I added to the broken caddy, so I could make it fit into the disk shelf. I should probably just remove that, because it's just going to be wasting power. But I'm going to online it anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go over to Server Manager here, and I should be able to create a pool. I'm not 100% sure if it'll see the disks as available because of how I, how they weren't unallocated when I put them in. I might have to restart the server or something, we'll see. And there should be six 750GB drives in the primordial pool. Or that... and... One, two, three, four, five. We are missing one. Okay. <laughs> that took way too much work, but it's definitely there. There's definitely six hard drives. But there's. We are missing one here. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, I'm just gonna reboot the server real quick and then we'll get back to it. Um, what would this be? Hardware installation? Sure, unplanned. <laughs> And since it's rebooting now, we can't use Remote Desktop, but we can use the ILO Integrated Remote Console for the um, server that I showed in my ILO video. Um, you can go watch that if you want to know how to set up ILO. <coughs> this is actually going to kick me out pretty soon because it's not posting yet and I don't have an ad ILO Advanced license, so I'm not allowed to use the console um, in the operating system. I'm only allowed to use it when it's posting. We might, we might be able to get to the post if it can hurry up and stop services. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Come on, server. This is pretty cool, though, because you can watch a server post without having a monitor plugged into it. I'm just sitting on my computer upstairs. And, yeah, there's that message. And for those who are wondering, yes, I am using an HBA, not a RAID controller, so that's why Windows just gets access to all the disks in the disk shelf. And to be honest, I think it's a pretty good system to have it like that, because you can add, I mean, except for when you add disks that have been used before and need to be have their partitions deleted, most of the time, it's a pretty good system, because you can 
add disks without restarting the operating system. So there's all the disks. And now we're booting. Okay, primordial. Hey, I think that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the 149 gigabyte one. Perfect. New storage pool. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Storage pool name. Let's since I'm uncreative, let's just call this Storage Pool Three. And let's get all of these 750 gigabyte drives in there. Confirmation. Create. I believe you can have different size drives in a storage pool too. And when you create a virtual disk, then you can decide what the redundancy is and all that stuff. It's a really quite a nice system. Um, okay. So now I need to create a virtual disk from storage pool three. And I will call this storage pool three virtual disk one. And think a mirrored array is what we want there. Two-way mirror is good enough. Um, fixed provisioning is good. Specify the size. We can just use the maximum size. Sorry about the dog again. Oh, this is really bad time for this. Always, always when I'm recording, always when I'm recording, there's got to be like a squirrel or something. Okay. So then we can create our mirrored array, two terabytes, extra space for me to store my crap on. Okay, and now we need to create the volume. So we have the storage pool, volume size there, yep, let's just again call this storage pool three. Virtual disk one, confirmation, create, and then in File Explorer we will have a two terabyte-ish disk that we can that is redundant and we can store everything on. Let's go check it out. There it is. So I hope you liked this video. It was not nothing too interesting, but if you like looking at servers, and that's good. Um, so yeah. And if you're new here, please sub consider subscribing because I'm going to keep putting out videos every now and then about server stuff and other tech-related things just for fun. So nothing too serious, just some casual video watching. So thanks for watching. See you next time.